What's up, everyone? So today we have clamps and more clamps and forks and bars and scooters. So many scooter parts. What we're doing today is we're talking about compression systems. A lot of you guys don't really know what a compression system is, or even what this thing is. You're probably saying, Clayton, what is that thing? Is it a brass knuckle? Is it a cylinder? I don't know. What is it? What is this thing? Is it piping? Is it for fertilizer? I don't know. There's tons of compression systems on the market. Over the years, there's probably been like 10 compression systems that all basically do the same thing. When scooters originally started, there was a compression system called threaded, which basically means there's a whole bunch of threads all the way around down the fork and you would get these big nuts and literally just tighten the, like, like literally just spin the nuts all the way down until they got to like the headset. And then you get another nut and tighten it against that one nut so that it wouldn't move. It's a really dumb compression system, but the whole reason Razor and Micro and Mad Gear, they all, the reason they all used it was it's actually the cheapest way to do compression. So instead of having like a, a bolt that runs down, you literally just have two like giant nuts. No pun intended. The most common compression systems that we'll get into today are HIC, and Clayton will talk about that. Next one is SCS. Another really common um, compression system is IHC. IHC was invented by Envy Scooters uh, like a while ago. It's basically, like it literally is HIC, but it's just designed for standard size bars and aluminum bars. So because Envy had aluminum bars come out, they needed a compression system that would work inside of aluminum bars that wasn't ICS. Basically, it was their way of combating that. So basically all it is, is basically a fork tube that's thinner than this and the headset goes in normally and there's like an adapter that goes in the top headset so the fork doesn't actually move around. It's an interesting idea. I don't, I've never ran IHC. I've just, it's really common to like completes and stuff and if you know any Envy or Fast Riders, ask them how they like it, but I, I don't know. I, I don't see any problems with it. It's just good for completes. Another type of compression system is ICS. Basically stands for internal uh, compression system. It's literally like the best and lightest compression, but it's just the biggest inconvenience to do it. How it works is you have a star nut in your bars and you drop a bolt through your fork. The bolt basically comes out at the top and the, and the, the threads of the bolt come through. You feed your bars through. You put your bars on and the bolt from here goes all the way into your bars and threads into your bars. It's the lightest compression system. From what I've been told, it doesn't really come loose that much if you do it correctly. And the correct way to do it is you tighten the ICS most of the way, tighten your clamp fully and then fully tighten it. I know a lot of people tighten their ICS completely and then tighten their clamp. No, you have to go tighten your uh, ICS bolt, then tighten your clamp and then tighten the uh, ICS bolt even more and that'll just seal it so it won't come loose. Um, that's what Marcel told me, the inventor of ICS, so yeah. Um, another type of compression system that used to come on district scooters is Pytel compression, compression system. This was invented by Michael Pytel. It's basically a compression system that doesn't use any like internal threading or bolting. It's actually the clamp itself. Um, it's basically the clamp itself and it has like a, like a wedge inside. So when you tighten the top clamp, it like presses the bottom part of the clamp down. It's really like complicated and hard to explain, but if you see it in action, it's sick. Um, another type of compression system that came out a while ago was TLC. It was threaded lock compression. And basically it was like a combination between HIC and like threaded, like headset, I mean like a threaded fork. I don't know, it was super weird. Uh, it, it never really caught on, but that's like another type of compression system. And Recently, there's another type of compression system that Youth Gone Wild or YGW Innovations came out with that's called the Jack Compression System, and it's basically SCS and HIC put together. And basically how it works, so suppose that you have your HIC shim and your bolt and all that stuff, and like Clayton was saying, if your bars are on, like literally covering your fork, you have a better chance of bending it. So the way that YGW combated that was they made a clamp that is that is basically a quad clamp. So there's no, and if you look through an SCS clamp, there's a little lip in here. There's actually like, there's actually no lip. So the clamp just slides on top of this part and then you basically put your bar through the top. So it's like HIC and SCS put together. It's kind of interesting. Um, I've never ran it myself. I'm probably gonna try it out pretty soon. So I'm curious to see how it works. Now the main compression system that we're gonna talk about in this video is HIC and SCS. The reason that we're gonna talk about those is in our opinions and on Dialed's opinions, those are the most trusted compression systems. Trusted like Ricky. 
Um, they're the most trusted compression systems, and it's just the ones that we know the best and the ones that we would actually spend money on and put our time into. So here's Clayton with HIC. H I C. I don't know what it means. Hidden internal compression. That's what it means. Hidden internal compression. I know this stuff better than you, better than Will, everyone. So, <laughs> so me knowing all this stuff and being so smart, knowing all these things. What HIC does is this is the same fork, by the way, it's just painted. So the fork slides through, correct, and then. There's a shift, and then this bolt right here, that's on top of the fork, like so, tightens down, which holds everything together, so your scooter does not fall apart or be rattling. So, whenever I drop it, that's the table, but it's it's dialed. It's not like our, our YouTube name. It's dialed. So, this being the HSC compression, how it works after you have the shim, everything, the headset cap, the um, everything tightened down, all secure. All you do is you have the clamp with your slit on the side and slide her down like so. Tighten her on up and she's good to go. That's basically what a HIC compression does. So the reason why I prefer it over SES is I have nothing against SES, but I mainly want my screw to be a little bit lighter just so I'm able to do more tricks and because that's just what I prefer. I personally think that they both equally come out um, like they come loose just as often. Like it, um, if I were to go back to SES, I could. It's not like I, I wouldn't run it. I mean, I, I like SES. And this is Will with SES. All right, thanks Clayton. So now we are getting into SES. Now basically the way SES works, it's practically the same thing as HIC, except the shim is just in the clamp. And the clamp is a little bit bigger. Now SES was the very first compression system that came out to the market. It was invented by Andrew Broussard back in the day. And the first clamp that it came on was the Scooter Resource uh, SES. And back in the day, this was like a super revolutionary thing because up until then, every single fork has been threaded. So to have a fork be not threaded and to be like compressed down with a bolt was like some, something super revolutionary and something that he got from the, from the bike industry. It's how like stems and bars work on a bike. So basically how SCS works is, I'll just show you real quick. Pow! My scooter's all taken apart. Well, mostly taken apart. Now, let's get into how SCS works. So the way that, I, that HIC works versus SCS is HIC is basically a shim that goes on top of your fork. And then once you have the shim on, you basically put this little cap on top of the shim and you get a bolt that goes through, and then this bolt threads into your fork, so that way everything just stays really like tight together. Um, and basically, SCS works the exact same way. And so instead of having a shim, you basically have a lip inside of your uh, SCS clamp that this little cap will catch. So I feel like it's time for a change in my SCS. I've been running this tilt one for a while, and I'm gonna shout out, shout out my boy, uh, Zach Martin. So I'm going to put this one on right now. So something that's crucial about SCS is when you tighten on your clamp, you need to make sure that the, that the bit of your fork is shorter than the distance between the bottom of your clamp and where the lip is on the inside of your clamp. Um, if the fork tube is longer, you'll need to do one of two things. You'll either need to put headset spacers in, and this is why they make these. This is the exact reason why they make these. You need to put headset spacers on, or you need to cut your fork. Me, I did both. I chopped my fork and I put a uh, headset spacer on. If you chop your fork, make sure that you get a star nut and it's not just like a threaded fork like, like this thing or else you are SOL'd. Um, so yeah, just saying that so you don't screw up your crap. Anyway, so make sure this is shorter and when you put this on, oh, upside down. When you put this on, ah! all right, basically, when you put it on, you wanna make sure it's straight and just literally like, line up the flat face of your SCS, if you have one, with just like the flat face of your fork, and then it should be good. Next, get your screw and your compression cap, put the screw through the cap, bam, and then drop that sucker right in. Oops, bam. Now at this point, the bolt should have hit the star nut or whatever it's threading into. Um, not all bolts are that small, if you look at this thing right here, this is actually like pretty sick. So if you look at like these two things, like the Ethic Fork versus just like a standard SES, 
if Ethic Fork literally has the compression cap and the bolts, like, and the threads built into one piece. So that's something that re that's really cool that Tilt originally started, or I guess the mountain bike industry started it, but Tilt was the first scooter company to do this, and they did on their Legacy Fork, and I don't know, I think it's a super cool idea, so that way you don't lose, like, all these little bits. Because I have a Starna in my fork, I can't run this fat bolt, um, but yeah. That, I, just wanted, I just wanted to show that real quick. Basically, just get your big compression bolt if your fork requires it, or your smaller bolt and your compression cap and, your, and just drop it in. Now, it should hit what it's threading into, if it's a star nut, if it's just the threads in the fork, whatever it could be. Just make sure it's going in straight. Um, another thing is, make sure that your compression screw is uh, greased and not just like gross, because nobody likes a dry hole. Now, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw this sucker down and basically just screw it down until it gets tight. Something that James G taught me about six years ago on the Lucky Scooters YouTube channel was the perfect tightness of a, of a fork. And I've been using this technique for, like I said, six years. So James, if you're watching this, thanks so much, man. Um, basically, I'm just gonna tighten this until you can go lift up your deck and flick your fork and it'll turn a quarter of the way around. So if you go and spin your fork and it turns like a little bit plus or minus a quarter of a turn, that's the ideal tightness. Well, at least that's what I think. If you like a little bit more tight, make it a little more tight. If you like a little bit more loose, then you like it loose, I guess. Next thing is uh, you're gonna have to drop your bars in here and because you have the compression cap and that, sh that lip, your bars are gonna stop literally halfway. So if you think about an SCS clamp, it's literally a double clamp for your fork and a double clamp for your bars. Um, I really like this because it keeps things separated and the cool part is, is it actually adds an inch and a half or two inches, um, depending on your clamp, to your actual like height of your bars. So an SCS is actually a little hack in getting higher bars. And the other nice thing about an, S an SCS versus an HIC is you don't actually need a slit in your bars. Because you're not compressing the bars onto the actual fork and the bars don't need to be compressed or like the inside of the bars don't need to be compressed, there's, there's no need for a slit. So you can just put your bars in here and now your bars won't just snap off of the slit because I've seen plenty of people run SES with a slit and their bars just literally just break off because it just gets crushed because there's nothing on the inside of it. Um, now you're probably thinking to yourself like, dang it, well, I wanna run SES but I have a slit in my bars. Well. District Scooters actually makes a shim that you put on the inside of your bars that covers up the slip, so that problem is fixed. Now, all you basically do is just tighten your clamp, basically top to bottom. I like to tighten, this is my, my personal rule of thumb, is I tighten it until it doesn't easily move, and then I move down to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then from the top to the bottom again, I just tighten it fully all the way around. I recommend doing this because if you just tighten the top one fully and just tighten the bottom one fully and leave these two guys loose till the end and then tighten them, it can honestly just warp your clamp and seize your bolts because if this clamp is, if this is really tight together, there's a lot of pressure on this screw and there's no pressure on this screw and you try to untighten this, there's gonna be so much pressure holding this screw in and then your clamp will be seized. So don't seize a clamp, use grease and your brain. Um, so, yeah, that's basically SCS in a nutshell. If you have any questions about uh, compression systems, don't be afraid to go to your local scooter shop and ask about, yeah, you like how compression systems work, because I'm sure they'll be happy to help tell you. Oh no, Will, I don't have a local scooter shop because I live in the middle of Iowa. Well, fortunately enough for you, if you have any questions, just call a scooter shop. Like, why not? If you call a scooter shop with an actual question and not just being annoying, they will definitely answer it for you. So. Just be nice, just be friendly, and that's all people want in this world, really. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about compression systems, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out, Girl Scouts.